Hi everyone, checking in with you for this week's midweek devotional. Well, we're in a devotional series on the book of Galatians, and we're looking at a letter Paul wrote uh, to the church in the first century. And in this letter, we learn that we're not only saved by the gospel, but we also grow by the gospel. Paul is saying that we don't begin by faith and then proceed to grow through the law. Not only are we justified by faith in Christ, we are also sanctified by faith in Christ. We never leave the gospel behind. We are to always live by faith. And the passages we're looking at today talk of blessings and promise. So let's take a look. Uh, we're in Galatians chapter 3, and I'm going to read some select verses out of chapter 3. Paul writes, I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? So also Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God, because the righteous will live by faith. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. What I mean is this, the law, introduced 430 years later, does not set aside the covenant previously, previously established by God, and thus do away with the promise. For if the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on the promise. But God, in his grace, gave it to Abraham through a promise. So let's look at this. We have to remember in this letter that Paul is addressing false teachers who are telling these new believers in Christ that they had to keep the particular observances of the Jewish law, such as circumcision, dietary restrictions, and cleanliness laws. So to help us understand what Paul's trying to say, he uses the example of Abraham. Now, what's most important about Abraham is that he was a man of faith. When the Bible tells us God credited Abraham's faith as righteousness, it means that God is treating Abraham as if he were living a perfectly righteous life. The text does not say that his faith was righteous. Rather, it was counted as righteousness. God treats us as righteous, free from condemnation, even though we are still actually unrighteous in our heart and behavior. We are justified. This is why Paul says those who believe are children of Abraham. What matters is not physical descent from Abraham, but spiritual descent, that is, having the same faith as he did. Those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham. Notice that it does not say that Abraham believed in God, though certainly he did. You know, believing in God is not saving faith. James uh, 2.19 says that even demons believe in God. No, it wasn't that just Abraham believed in God, but that Abraham believed God. He believed that God would keep his promise. You can believe in God without actually believing God. So it's not just believing in the existence of God, but trusting God that he will do what he said he promised. So then, what is the purpose of the Old Testament law given through Moses? Paul tells us that the law does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the promise. The law of Moses cannot turn God's promise to Abraham into something other than what it is, a promise. So the law must have a different purpose. The law didn't come to tell us about salvation, but about sin. See, its main purpose is to show us our problem. The law shows us our sin. It proves to us that we can't be the solution since we are unable to be perfect law keepers. See, Paul realized that he was a prisoner of sin, helpless to cure himself or, or free himself. So the purpose of the law is to show us that we do not just fall short of God's will, requiring some extra effort on our part, but rather that we are under sin and we need to be rescued. The law has the power to show us that we are not righteous, to show us we need to be rescued, to show us we need to be saved, but it cannot give us the power to be righteous. The law then doesn't oppose the promise of salvation by grace through Christ, but rather it points us to our need of it. The law shows us 
our need for Christ, our need for what Jesus did for us. You know, I like to think of the law as a mirror. You know, if you look into a mirror, a mirror can show us our flaws. A mirror can show us that we have, you know, dirt on our face. We need something else, though, to make us clean. A mirror cannot make us clean. It's not soap. It can just show us the dirt. You know, more than that, we need something to deal with not just our outer uncleanliness, but we need something to deal with the flaws that go beneath our skin. We need to be made right with God. And the Bible says that it is the blood of Christ, his death in our place for our sin, suffering the punishment we deserved, is what makes us clean. It's what makes us right with God, because through faith in Christ, we are also given the righteousness of Christ. See, Jesus was the only one who could perfectly keep the law. Jesus does that by giving us his right standing with God when we put our trust in him by faith. We are given the Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. We are accepted by God and adopted into his family and now belong to his kingdom. We receive the promise by faith, just as Abraham did. 